One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video, guys. We've got a lot of great examples recently. We've discussed a few already, but we're going to uh, discuss some more on the opposite side and you know, to the forward side. First and foremost, before we get any deeper into this, what I'm going to talk about is we are going to get into market recap really fast, and then we're going to discuss all the little ins and outs, all right? So we're finally bouncing again in the market. We had a big sell-off, big blow-off top over the last week. We had a good first green day set up here, which is what we were all looking for. Uh, and this was, right, Friday? No, Thursday? No, Wednesday, sorry, shit, I've already forgotten. So Wednesday, good setup there. I'm, I'm still bullish on, on the market. I see no reason to be bearish. Obviously, the levels that we have to break now are this really this 282 level in the queues. So I'm, I'm really looking at the queues as kind of the leader of everything else because we've been in a very tech-driven market. And so the queues are going to dictate a lot, even with the election coming. Yes, absolutely. I'm still bullish up to the election point. Okay. Up until the election, I remain bullish. Okay. There is no shaking me out of that. The only way that I'm shaken out of a bullish thought is very, a very simple explanation is if we lose that nine EMA, if we lose that nine EMA, okay. All right. I'll join the cell parade. All right. Because we haven't lost the nine in what, six months? We lost it for a brief moment and then quickly reclaimed it. So this right here, and this is on a weekly time frame too, guys. I'm not looking at these things. I'm not looking every five minutes. I'm not looking at the 15 minute. I'm not looking at these little baby drops. Okay. I'm I started buying spy at 344. That was my starter that I talked about. I bought it into this candle and took a starter on that. Okay. I added when we held this 333 level. I added right here and I'm still long spy. My target is 345 and 350. So I wanna bounce to 345 to 350 and I'm good. Okay. Now I think Oren pointed this out. Very good thing to point out is, you know, tomorrow is the FOMC meeting before the election. Uh, it's a final one. Yeah, it, it, they're probably not gonna do anything different. I, I agree. I don't know if you, is this a quote from someone? I see the quotations. I don't know if that's a quote from anybody, but I, I agree that they're probably not going to do anything different to shake up, to shake up anything. So yeah, it's from a blog. Okay, cool. Yeah, I agree with this outlook. Um, they should be prepared for anything. Absolutely prepared for anything. I don't think you need to be putting risk on right now. So this is kind of like, I know we didn't get to do this yesterday. So I had to uh, move my office into our master bedroom. And uh, so my life is in <laughs> a lot of disarray right now um, in terms of like routine. And so I am largely focused on just sticking with what I have in terms of positions, um, except for what I believe to be the, a good play is DraftKings. This last, was Thursday night the first night of football or was Sunday night the first night of football? I don't remember. Regardless, NFL is back. And now that the NFL is back, sports betting, we're, we're game on. It's game on for sports betting. And there hasn't been any. Okay, yeah, you can bet on some basketball game outcomes. You can bet spreads. You can bet all that crap. You can do whatever you want to do. Biggest betting, the biggest sports betting, hands down, in my opinion, is football. I mean, that's the biggest attention grabber. Was it last Thursday? Okay. I missed the Thursday night game. I just caught, I caught all the Sunday games. We're not going to talk about the Buccaneers. You're right. It was the Chiefs. There we go. All right. Anyway, so what a fitting, what a fitting, fitting team to open it up. Overall outlook here, and I'll go, I'm going to review DraftKings in a little bit. Uh, I'll review that in a second, but let's get back to the spy. I'm still bullish on this. I, I, the pullback in the market was due to Apple. Okay. That this 
I mean, if you put Apple's chart and then SPY, this is, this is all Apple right here, okay? And once we recover from that, you know, once Apple recovers from that, Apple could potentially have a more sell-off tomorrow, but right here was when the conference or when the event started and they, I, I, I don't understand why we sold off. I understand that there wasn't anything big. How did they affect the market? I don't know. Maybe because they're like the most valuable company in the world that is publicly traded. I mean, they're, they're a giant. They're an absolute giant. I mean, they lead everything. So pretty much look what was, I mean, we had full-blown consolidation, right? Full-blown, all consolidation, nice consolidation, good consolidation. End of the world happened here. Shorts won again. Nope. Reverse. I mean, what's that? What's that? cha-cha slide reverse reverse or whatever the hell it is i mean it's like it, it, this is why i mean all dips are getting bought this dip bought this dip bought it, they're all getting bought and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that you don't need to read the tape to see that this bounce 339 339 up to 340 in a span of what's that the last 15 20 minutes of the day it's like i'm just I'm, I'm, there's no reason to be, if your edge is to short these pushes, all right, more power to you, do your thing, whatever, doesn't matter to me, okay? But in terms of overall trading, we're not talking about, you know, what, like Rod said, I'm only a 30 minute bear, yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. I'm a bear. I'm a bear for all of about 30 minutes. Like I was a bear on Tesla for all of about a minute and a half, a minute and a half. And I was, that was it. I was, I was right back to right back to bullish. And so I think that that's the same thing in the market. I don't pay attention to these after hours pullbacks, these little after hours ticks and things. The ES look, I mean, we held the nine on the weekly, like, we closed right at it. If there was a time to continue a sell-off, it's this week, okay? We still have time to break this, all right? This week is not over yet. We've still got three days of full trading before this ends. So a lot of things can happen between now and then, all right? A lot of stuff can happen. I still think that the market is gonna close green this week. How high it goes, no one knows. This 340 level, Okay, this level right here, that level is big, all right? It's big. It's the prior all-time hot, really? Just delete on me? Just disappear altogether? Okay, fine. That level right there, a close over that level, and we're back in the game. We're back in the game. That's a full-blown bear trap if there ever was one. Now, what could happen? We can every, almost every time, and this is part of what MIC teaches is when it hits the resistance the first time, it pulls back, okay? That doesn't mean you turn bearish immediately. Oh my God, the market's tanking. It's gonna come down. I mean, don't be buying here. There's no reason to be buying here. So that's why I don't, I, I, that's why I was saying in chat that I didn't want a long Netflix overnight, even though I should have. We closed at 496 and we're at, you know, 498 after hours. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do it because of the state of the market. I'm not going to long Netflix overnight when the spy is at a key resistance. If we would have closed in the market over 3400 or 340, whatever you want to say, okay? I would be long I would be long Netflix overnight. Wow, that was really loud. Sorry about that. Let me stop that. There you go. So if the market was not at a big resistance level, I'd be long Netflix overnight. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up, back to the video. How do you research which stocks fall under the S&P? You can just like Google that and it'll give you the list. How do you find out what institutions are buying and selling their positions? Uh, same day, I don't think you can know unless you have some inside information. Uh, the only other way to do that is through their filings. 
So you could do that like this. So for example, with BAMSEC, uh, let's take like a turd company, for example, like Sava, you know, Sava's running in small caps. That's what everybody's looking at. It's the next shiny thing. So you could take a company like Armistice, Intracoastal. I mean, these are known pump and dumpers. What you do is, is you go in here and you click SEC Edgar and you're looking for Armistice Capital like their firm right here. And then they have a CIK number, which is this number right here. So you can see all the filings that they file and what you're going to follow. Uh, you're going to follow their 13F filings. Uh, so that's their quarterly filed report of their holdings, which is like here. So you're going to follow the 13 Fs and then you can see what they hold positions in at that time. And you can see their, uh, pretty sure you can see their average too. So like this is the HTML document, like you'll, the, the, the front page of it. But what you'll do is you'll go in here and you'll download the information table, right? Now it's been a long time since I've done this. I used to do this a lot, but so here's all their holdings. This is what they own. They own AutoZone. That's interesting. So th this is what they own. This is the voting um, number of shares, total number of shares here, total value in thousands. So if you want to figure out what their average is, you're just going to take the total number of value in thousands and divide by the number of shares. And that's the average that they hold from. Now keep in mind that doesn't mean that, you know, with these companies like Armistice, you know, these these people are known for pumping and dumping. Like they're known for investing in a company in order to get warrants and money from the company to get shares that they can sell into the market and recoup what they give the company in terms of financing payments. And so I mean I'm not I'm not telling anyone to follow these people long, but you can start to keep track of these people. Uh, for example, like let's, let's find somebody, ah, Jivo, like here we go. Intracoastal and CVI, like CVI is, is another known pumper. I'm looking for savvy, savvy management. Uh, savvy is a very known pumper as well. And what you can do is you can start to kind of follow these people's picks and their positions. And what you'll see is you'll see the SC13G filing first, like this discloses their position, how many shares they bought, that discloses the position. And can I list them here? I. I, dude, I don't even have the list anymore. Like, I, I think you can go to like placement tracker, I think is placement tracker. It publishes the top 20. It shows on the quarterly. Here you go. So placement tracker publishes quarter one, 2020 pipe and private placement market league tables. So these are the people that raised the most money through pipes. The number one is H.C. Wainwright, number two, Maxim, number three, Jeffries, Cohen, AGP, Ladenberg, Thalman, Oppenheimer. See, here is why I don't believe Oppenheimer. Every time they put an upgrade, because they're all a bunch of scandalous fucks. So, you know, all of these people, you go back and look at these, you know, and you look at the companies that they hold. So H.C. Wainwright is the most active placement agent. Lincoln Park is the most active institutional investor. Cooley LLP is the most active issuer. Schult Roth is the most active investor counsel. Uh, Elenoff Grossman is the most active agent counsel. And here's one for you. Jeffries is the most active agent for at-the-market transactions. So if your ticker is popping up in small caps and Jeffries shows to hold a position, then your ass better start digging and you better start looking for that ATM and seeing if they have shares to sell into the open market. So uh, yeah, here you go. Here, Institutional Investor League. There's Lincoln Park at the very top. Anson, Armistice, Intracoastal, all of them. All of them are here. All the sons of bitches are here. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.